Mastering Subcontractor Management Strategies Top leaders must own the subcontractor management strategy to achieve operational excellence. Who are the primary stakeholders responsible for outlining the key objectives and strategic goals of our organization's subcontractor management strategy, which is designed to achieve operational excellence? The primary stakeholders responsible for outlining the key objectives and strategic goals of an organization's subcontractor management strategy designed to achieve operational excellence typically include top-level executives, senior management, department heads, and subject matter experts. These stakeholders should collaborate to define the overall vision, objectives, and key performance indicators KPIs, for the subcontractor management strategy which will guide the organization's efforts to optimize subcontractor performance, improve operational efficiency, and enhance overall business outcomes. Top-level executives, such as the CEO, CFO, and COO, provide strategic direction and oversight, ensuring that the subcontractor management strategy aligns with the organization's overall business objectives and goals. They approve the strategic goals and objectives, allocate necessary resources, and ensure that the organization's risk tolerance is taken into account. Senior management, including department heads and directors, play a crucial role in developing and implementing the subcontractor management strategy. They are responsible for translating the strategic goals into actionable plans, allocating resources, and assigning responsibilities to team members. They also ensure that the strategy is integrated into their respective department's operations and that progress is monitored and reported regularly. Subject matter experts, such as procurement professionals, contract administrators, and operations managers, contribute their specialized knowledge and expertise to the development of the subcontractor management strategy. They provide input on best practices, industry trends, and regulatory requirements, ensuring that the strategy is comprehensive, effective, and compliant. The collaborative effort of these stakeholders results in a clear and comprehensive subcontractor management strategy that outlines the objectives, key performance indicators, KPIs, and performance metrics for achieving operational excellence. The strategy should address the following key aspects. 1. Subcontractor selection and qualification. Define the criteria, processes, and procedures for selecting and qualifying subcontractors, including pre-qualification, tendering, and contract award. 2. Contract management. Outline the contract management framework, including contract administration, change management, and dispute resolution processes. 3. Performance management. Establish the performance metrics, KPIs, and reporting requirements to monitor and evaluate subcontractor performance, including quality, safety, delivery, and cost. 4. Risk management. Identify and mitigate risks associated with subcontractor management, including reputational, operational, financial, and compliance risks. 5. Communication and collaboration. Define the communication and collaboration protocols between the organization and subcontractors, including regular meetings, progress reporting, and issue escalation procedures. 6. Continuous improvement. Establish a culture of continuous improvement, encouraging feedback, innovation, and learning from successes and failures. By outlining these objectives and strategic goals, the organization can develop a comprehensive subcontractor management strategy that drives operational excellence, improves subcontractor performance, and ultimately enhances business outcomes. As I delved into the world of subcontractor management, I couldn't help but think of the intricate web of relationships that underpin this complex ecosystem. It's a delicate dance, where trust, communication, and mutual understanding are essential to achieving operational excellence. Let me take you back to a particularly challenging project I worked on, where a seemingly straightforward subcontractor management strategy turned out to be a recipe for disaster. We had partnered with a reputable firm to handle a critical component of our project, but as the deadline approached, it became clear that their deliverables were subpar. The quality was poor, and the timelines were consistently missed. 
As I sat in meetings with our team and the subcontractor, trying to get to the bottom of the issue, I realized that the root cause was not a lack of skill or expertise, but a fundamental mismatch between our expectations and their understanding of what was required. We had failed to establish clear objectives, and our communication had been ambiguous, leaving room for misinterpretation. It was then that I realized the importance of building strong, personal connections with our subcontractors. I took it upon myself to forge relationships with the key decision makers at the partner firm, to understand their concerns, constraints, and motivations. I made it a point to have regular, candid conversations with them, listening actively and providing constructive feedback. As our relationships deepened, I could sense a shift in the dynamics. The subcontractor began to feel a sense of ownership and accountability, and their commitment to delivering high-quality work improved dramatically. They started to proactively communicate with us flagging potential issues, and suggesting innovative solutions. But it wasn't just about building relationships, it was also about establishing a culture of transparency and accountability. We implemented a robust governance framework, which clearly outlined roles, responsibilities, and expectations. We established key performance indicators, KPIs, that were measurable, achievable, and aligned with our strategic objectives. Through this process, I came to appreciate the power of empowerment. By giving our subcontractors the autonomy to make decisions and take ownership of their work, we were able to tap into their creativity and innovation. We encouraged them to think outside the box, to challenge our assumptions, and to bring new ideas to the table. One of the most significant breakthroughs came when we introduced a collaborative problem-solving approach. We established a joint task force comprising representatives from both our organizations to tackle complex issues and identify areas for improvement. This collective effort not only fostered a sense of shared responsibility, but also led to some remarkable innovations. As we continued to navigate the challenges of subcontractor management, I realized that it's not just about managing contracts or enforcing compliance, it's about cultivating a shared sense of purpose and values. We needed to create an environment where our subcontractors felt valued, respected, and empowered to make a difference. In the end, our subcontractor management strategy wasn't just about achieving operational excellence, it was about building a community of like-minded individuals who shared a passion for delivering exceptional results. It was about recognizing that, together, we could achieve far more than we could alone. Throughout this journey, I felt a sense of wonder as I watched the seeds of trust and collaboration take root. I felt a sense of pride, as our subcontractors began to take ownership of their work and deliver results that exceeded our expectations. And I felt a sense of humility, as I acknowledged the limitations of our initial approach and the importance of continuous learning and improvement. This experience taught me that subcontractor management is not just about process and procedure, it's about people, relationships, and a deep understanding of the intricate dance between our organizations. It's about recognizing that, ultimately, our success is intertwined with that of our subcontractors, and that together, we can achieve operational excellence.